Okay, you'll save my game. It's really weird to say that, but when I added randomness to the game's economy, it got way more engaging. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create the same loot system that just saved my game. By the end of this video, you are going to understand how you can use the good engine random number generator class to create a weighted system that picks an item out of a list based on a drop chance. A fundamental aspect of the gaming experience is to feel that your actions as a player have a direct impact into the game outcome. Otherwise, you feel that the game is rigged and the outcome was predetermined, so your actions are meaningless. There is no point in to play the game because the outcome will always be the same. To make players' choices meaningful, we can rely on uncertainty and there are several tools, techniques and devices that we can use to add uncertainty to our game. For instance, it can be a plot twist or the very plot itself, the story that we are creating. It can be revealed with uncertainty. Players never know what's going to happen. It can be a character that is only going to be unlocked later on in the story. It can be some enemies that appear here and there now and then. It can be some equipment but there is only so much content we can create right so when players review information about a game it can be a character it can be some equipment we can add a, an extra layer of uncertainty by relying on randomness so let's say that our players just unlocked a new equipment let's say it's a weapon but they already have a skill that deals let's say 30 damage points and this weapon deals 20. There is nothing much players can do in this situation. They are always going to choose this skill because it deals an absolute amount of 30 damage points. But unless we play with like resource management, so for instance, it can be mana uh, or energy. So to cast this spell, players will have to spend some mana and well, players will always going to cast the spell until they deplete the mana pool and then they are going to choose using the weapon. But if we add an extra layer of randomness, it can start to add some layers of uncertainty to the game, making player's choices more meaningful. So let's say that this same weapon now deals between 20 to 40 damage points, and the skill still deals a, an absolute amount of 30 damage points. Now players can risk trying to get the 40 uh, damage points with the using the weapon, and they will still have to pay some uh, energy points or some mana to cast this skill. So how they are going to balance out? What's the weight of their decisions now? You can start to see how things get more interesting when we add uncertainty. Players will have to play with risk and reward. And we can add another extra layer of uncertainty now if we add a critical hit system. So for instance, this same weapon has a 5% chance of dealing a critical hit. So now players will get a chance of using this weapon and, and dealing 80 damage points if they are really lucky. While with the, the skill they are going to still deal 30 damage points. Or we can add some critical hit with the skill as well. But you can see that the choices that players are making are way more meaningful. They have some play style, some strategies to play with that will fit their own playstyle. This is a, a way to express themselves with the game system. And all of that because we spice things up with randomness. If you follow the channel, you may have noticed that I'm not on my usual setup, right? This is because this is my new office, at least for the next six months. Milky Way Mailing Inc. got selected to go through a six months long incubation program. And to join the program, I had to create a playable demo of the game and it got nothing but compliments. People love Milky Way Mini Inc. And I think that part of that is due to the revamp that I did to the game's internal economy. But before we talk about this, and I doubt I want to get some feedback from you guys. Is the lightning okay? Is the image okay? And especially, is the audio okay? As I said, this is my new office, so I don't know how it's going to sound like. We may have some really intense reverberation, but I'm working on that. But I really need your feedback on this regard so I can fix the issues, so I can provide the best experience for you guys. But that's it, let's get into how I fix what was broken in Milky Way Milink. In the game's lore, we managed to become a type 
to civilization in the Kalachev scale. This means that we mastered how to harness the sun's energy. But to prevent abusing the solar energy and allocating it smartly, we created an economic system based on solar credits, which is essentially the game's currency. Everything you do will ultimately impact in the amount of solar credits that you currently have. And if you don't have enough solar credits to back up your actions, it's over. In Milk and Melink, you have to pay solar credits to create what we call a Time Awakening, in which you can use to trigger the Phoenix system once your chip explodes to travel back in time to your last Time Awakening. This is kind of like a save and load system, and if you don't have enough solar credits to trigger the Phoenix system, it's permadeath. Game over. You have no chance to travel back to your last save point. So this is how I managed to create a, the right incentives to players so that they can think about their actions before they dive into some quests. So they will have to grind to farm some solar credits to make a time awakening and they will have to keep some solar credits so that they can trigger the Phoenix system and travel back in time to day less time awakening. A cheaper alternative to that is to use the repairing system so players can travel back to the headquarter and asking for a spaceship repair. This costs way less than triggering the Phoenix system. To give players a reliable source of solar credits, I created the asteroids. Each asteroid would give players a hundred solar credits once destroyed. In my head, players would find these asteroids when they were exploring the space and they would make every effort to destroy them to get those 100 solar credits points. But this wasn't what happened. <laughs> well, it sounds amazing in theory, but when I put into action making a playtest for Midway Mini Inc., I figured that players were just completely ignoring these asteroids, even though I make it really abundant in the space so that when players went on their way to complete a quest goal, they would find these asteroids all around and they would put the effort to destroy them. But this wasn't what happened. They were passing by the asteroids and, well, ignoring them. And I think that this is because they figured that there is a correlation between how many solar credits the asteroids gave and how many solar credits they should expend to repair the spaceship. So for each health point loss on the spaceship, players would have to spend a hundred solar credits to repair it. So they basically make a base math to calculate that for each health point that they lost, they will have to destroy one asteroid. And until they really needed to get some health points, they would basically just ignore the asteroid. So I needed to find a way to grab players' attention to make them make the effort to destroy this asteroid. To fix that, I created a loot system. Now, instead of getting a fixed 100 solar credits, when destroying an asteroid, players would get the chance to drop up to 3 ores. Each one of these ores could be an instance of an iron ore, which worth 1 solar credit, or it could be an instance of a cobalt ore, that worth 15 solar credits, or the rest one of them, the gold ore, which worth 100 solar credits. Now, players would destroy an asteroid for a chance to get 1 solar credit, 2 solar credits, 3 solar credits, 15, 17 solar credits, or if they jackpot the asteroid, 300 solar credits if they are really lucky and drop 3 instances of the gold ore. It never happened, but the chance is there and this is what really matters because this will poke into the player's mind every time they see an asteroid. Do you lose the chance of getting 300 solar credits? Well, what happened in the second playtest session is that they don't lose the chance. <laughs> Whenever players find an asteroid, they always destroy the asteroids, even the ones that I put deliberate to defend players. So on boss pits, I add some asteroids to, meant to defend players, but even those, they rather destroy them for a chance to get the so called jackpot. To create this loot system, I use Groot's random number generator class. The main component of this system is what I call random loot, which is a node specialized into randomizing a packet scene based on weighted options. The random number generator class has a method called randWeighted, which takes an array of float numbers representing the ratio in which each one of these elements have to be sorted out relative to all the other elements on the list. Using a dictionary, I pair the packet scenes representing each or 
with the ratio that I wanted that ore to drop from the asteroid. This way I could pass the weight list using the dictionary values method. This would return the index of the randomized item that I could use to get the respective packet seen using the dictionary keys method. After that, I emit a signal notifying which was the packet scene that was sorted out all of this randomization process. I then use this signal to connect on a spawner that has a method that asks for a packet scene to instance in the game world. If you don't know how this spawner works, I will put a link into this card on the top right corner of the video so that you can watch my tutorial about how to create a spawner in Builded Engine. The final element of this system is the random range counter, a <laughs> very simple node that I created that essentially iterates on a random range, emitting a signal on each iteration. I use this node to tell the random load component how many items it should randomize. To integrate all of these elements into a cohesive system, <laughs> let me show you how the asteroid scene looks like. So I have here the random range counter, which has this counted signal that I just told you that is emitted on each iteration. And I connected this signal to the random loot randomized item. And when the random loot randomized item method is called, it will emit a signal telling that the item, an item was randomized. And I connected this signal to the or spawner create method. This will make so that it will pick the packet scene that was sorted out by the random loot node. And it will create an instance of this scene and insert it into the game world itself. At the end of this process, the spawner emits a signal telling that an item was created. And I connected this signal to the random distribute distribute method. So this random distribute will basically take an, a circular area and we will sort out one of one position inside this area, run, a random position inside this area and we'll reposition a node to, the, uh, to that position that it randomized. This is just so when the asteroid explodes they appear into an area inside the asteroid explosion area. To trigger this system I have here the health resource. So if you don't know uh, how this health resource works i will highly recommend you to watch this video on the card because there i will show you a tutorial about how you can create a health bar and inside this tutorial i show how you can create game resources which is the main component of strategy elements in my games using this game resource you can create mana energy resource a health resource lumber gold so on and so forth it's the same component that i use to manage the players solar credits for instance but back here these uh, game resources they manage the changes in a given value so if the value changed they will emit a signal and especially if the value is depleted they will emit a signal so if this value reaches zero it will emit a depleted signal and i use this depleted signal to connect to the random range counter count method this will trigger all this chain reaction and well to decrease the health resource so the health points of the asteroid i use a hurt area so this hurt area will take some damage and when it takes this damage it will notify the health resource to decrease the, the same amount of damage that it took and this will decrease the health until it depletes so if you want to know how this hurt area works i will highly recommend you to watch how to create a combat system in good engine this video appearing on the top right corner as well there i show you how you can create hit and hurt boxes which is the bread and butter of a combat system this is what i use to detect when the player's bullets uh, collide with the asteroid hurt box decreasing the health uh, of the asteroid so this is a really interesting system if you want to play around with this loot system on your own project and create monsters treasure chests or destructible objects that drop a random loot i will share a link to a post i wrote about this loot system in which you can find a download link to all the assets that you need to copy paste the system into your project and start playing with it. At the very bottom of this post, you'll be able to subscribe to the waitlist for my upcoming Growth Adventure Essentials course. The course is going to teach you how you can use games to tell engaging stories with dialogues, quests, world events, and more. By subscribing to the waitlist, you'll be notified as soon as I launch the course and will take advantage of the early bird discount. 
before I increase the course price two weeks after launch. Subscribe to the waitlist and don't miss this chance. In this video, we saw how uncertainty plays a fundamental role in the player's experience and how we can use randomness to add layers of uncertainty in our game. We use the Gutted Engine Random Number Generator class to create a loot system to randomize an item based on a weighted chance. This system helped me improve my game by making players addicted to destroying asteroids in the hope of jackpotting three gold ores, fixing a major design issue I had before. Did you like this kind of video where I show some real world issues I'm having on my projects and present some design solutions for these issues? Well, leave a comment below so I understand what do you think about this format and don't forget to leave a thumbs up as well if this was the case. And if you like game design and development, this is what this channel is all about. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you won't miss future videos. But that's it, thank you so much for watching, keep developing and until the next time, see you there, bye bye.